the final NTSB report on the crash of November 79 November X-ray has been published. The report cites numerous negligent actions by the pilot that ended the lives of eight individuals on February the 13th, 2022. I should state at the outset that after a thorough examination of the flight data, and especially the cockpit voice recordings, this general aviation transcript is one of the worst, if not the worst case, of pilot incompetence that you may encounter. In this video, we will summarize the flight and describe the major findings by the National Transportation Safety Board. With so many pilot deficiencies and errors, I thought it best to recap the flight and group the failures in chronological order. This short 61 nautical mile flight departs Hyde County Airport destined for Michael J. Smith Field Airport in the district of Buford, North Carolina. On board the PC-12 are a father as the pilot, his son, student co-pilot, two adults and four teenagers. At this point, the pilots had failed to address a master alarm and they did not file an IFR flight plan knowing they were flying into IMC conditions. After three minutes into the flight, the controller informs the pilot that the restricted airspace is active. The pilot confirms that he will stay clear but still enters the restricted airspace. The cockpit voice recording then reveals four minutes of uncertainty and confusion before the pilots managed to loop out of the restricted airspace. With the pilots now 16 minutes into the flight, and halfway to their destination, the pilot finally manages to enter the waypoint lavity to keep them out of the restricted airspace. A request is made for the runway 26 RNAV. This is denied by ATC as the restricted airspace is still active. Explicit language in the cockpit in lieu of frustration continues to elevate. As the pilot attempts to enter the RNAV for runway 08, the controller contacts them and gives them the option for runway 26 as originally requested. The pilot accepts runway 26 and is cleared direct to Seagor. Now the trouble escalates in the cockpit as the pilot confuses the waypoint Seagor with Seabag. After another four hectic minutes, the pilots manage to get the waypoint Seagor entered into the system. After a correction in the heading to Seagor, ATC contacts the pilots and reports that the aircraft is 200 feet too low for the fixed Seagor. With the airplane now too low, the pilot pitches the plane up to about 10 degrees and this sets off the first stall warning as the airspeed has decreased to 109 knots. The autopilot then disconnects and continues to sound till the end of the flight. The cockpit voice recording now reveals the pilot to be very exasperated as the aircraft is in a steep climb. Stall and stick shaker activation warnings are numerous. The co-pilot yells out, we are sideways. The pilot continues to be still fixated on programming the flight management system and engaging the autopilot. The pilot is now screaming in a frustrated tone. Navigate, 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 while attempting to engage the autopilot. The aircraft climbs to 4,700 feet before entering a steep, descending right turn until impacting the ocean. 
Well, there you have it. Some aspects unbelievable, some aspects beyond comprehension. This is a flight that never should have departed. So tragic and unfortunate for those on board November 7-9, November X-ray on February the 13th, 2022. The National Transportation Safety Board determined the probable cause of this accident to be the pilot's inadequate pre-flight planning, inadequate in-flight monitoring of the airplane's flight parameters, and his failure to regain control of the airplane following entry into an inadvertent aerodynamic stall. The pilot's likely spatial disorientation following the aerodynamic stall also contributed to the outcome.